Welcome to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest trending news. If this is your first time, you're invited to hit that subscribe and the notification bell. That way you get all the juicy info as soon as it drops. Let's dive in. Diddy pleads not guilty to all charges. As we all know, this is the expected decision. According to a breaking news report from TMZ, Diddy is pleading not guilty to all of the charges put upon him. The multimedia figure and rapper was hit with three charges, including racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. All of this has been transpiring within Manhattan, New York, with his arrest occurring just the other day. He is yet to be convicted, but the potential outcomes are extreme. As it stands, he is currently facing a minimum of 15 years with a statutory maximum of life behind bars. Of course, Diddy is not wanting anything to do with that, which is why he offered a $50 million bail package. It includes selling his $48 million Miami home in addition to his mother's house in the same city. But furthermore, he's even willing to limit where he can travel, which is trimmed down to just certain districts of Florida and New York. TMZ is also reporting that the prosecutors feel Diddy is too much of a loose cannon to just let him walk on bail. There is still a lot to come, so be sure to stick around for breaking updates. But man, what are your thoughts on Diddy plead not guilty to all charges? That's what I expected. But what are your thoughts on the charges, man, and the severity? This guy's facing life in prison. He's in the fight of his life. But stay tuned to Rap Geek and we're on to the next story. Rich Homie Kwan's funeral was emotional, yet very uplifting. Rich Homie Kwan of the Atlanta rap scene in the 2010s had his funeral service just the other day. Overall, it's still incredibly hard to stomach this one as he was just 34 years young. But the loved ones of the fan favorite MC made sure to keep everyone in high spirits last week. The father, Corey Lamar, was originally planning on it being a private and quick ceremony. But after wrestling with it a little longer, he decided to give his fans a chance to be a part of this saddening yet beautiful day. According to the Shade Room, the funeral was available to watch online via the rapper's website. Rich Homie Kwan's service was held at the World Changers Church International in College Park, Georgia. For in-person attendees, you were able to go to the viewing and there were multiple time slots between 7 and 10 a.m. It was a grand and a beautiful and celebratory event. As well, stunning arrangements of candles and flowers. Additionally, you can hear that the music was also meant to come across as uplifting as possible as they lowered the lid onto the top of the elegant casket. Also, to further cement his legacy within the state of Atlanta, Rich Homie Kwan was granted his own day in Atlanta and South Fulton. The internet is still in disbelief, but they were also happy to see that he was sent off in proper fashion. Offset even expressed his emotion in the comments saying, Ish crazy shaking my head. Our prayers and condolences continue to go out to the family of Rich Homie Kwan and all his fans. What are your thoughts on the family of Rich Homie Kwan live streaming his memorial service? Is that something you would choose to do for one of your family members? Do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section. And we're on to the next story. Lil Reese is a wanted man. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thanks. TMZ reports that an arrest warrant was sworn out against the rapper on Tuesday, September 17th. The Houston Police Department claims that Lil Reese had an altercation with a woman believed to be his ex-girlfriend at the Pink House FKA Barbie nightclub. The woman in question alleged that the rapper punched her in the right cheek and applied pressure to her neck with both hands. Lil Reese's whereabouts are currently unknown. The woman who has not yet been identified by name claimed that she dated Lil Reese for two months, which is only 60 days. She ended the relationship a month ago and stated that her encounter with Reese at the Pink House was a complete coincidence. TMZ reports that the rapper tried to kiss the woman multiple times but became upset when his advances were rejected. 
The aforementioned assault then took place in front of multiple witnesses. The woman's friends called security in an attempt to intervene. Lil Reese's alleged ex also claimed that she was gasping for air during the attack. So he didn't just apply pressure to your neck, he was actually choking you. But let's continue. The Houston Police Department confirmed that the woman had red marks on her throat when she filed her report. There were also fingernail scratches observed at various spots on her neck. Lil Reese's legal representation has not responded to these claims or the warrants that have been sworn out for his arrest. And this is not the first time the Chicago rapper has been embroiled in a legal matter. Lil Reese was shot in the neck and critically wounded at an intersection in Country Club Hills, Illinois in 2019. Two years later, the rapper was grazed by a gunshot in a Chicago parking garage. Reese was also arrested in July of 2024 in relation to an ape case. TMZ reported that the rapper was taken into custody in Los Angeles, but he was cleared a month later. LA County District Attorney's Office told the outlet that they decided not to pursue the case. Reese was dismissive of the accusation when he discussed the matter on Twitter. Twitter fingers on fire. He said, some of these hoes be strictly for the streets, he wrote. You gotta know they ain't the wifey type. But what do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. And we're on to the next one. DJ Academics left in complete utter disbelief over existence of alleged Diddy freak off tapes. Man, Act couldn't believe his ears. Man, let's dive back in. DJ Academics is one of the main hip hop media personalities reacting to the allegations against Diddy. Diddy was officially indicted in New York just the other day, where he is currently being held behind bars. He has officially been hit with sex trap, kidnapping, and racketeering charges. Furthermore, there are extensive allegations about his supposed freak offs, yeah! But moreover, Diddy stands accused of luring in women with the promise of romantic relationships, only to coerce them into depraved sex acts. Just the other day, authorities held a press conference in relation to the indictment. It was here where numerous exhibits of alleged evidence were shown off. Rap Geek. Academics was streaming during the press conference, and he offered up incredulous reactions to what he was hearing. As we can see, he was absolutely flabbergasted when it was revealed that there are allegedly tapes of Diddy and his associates engaging in the freak-offs. The feds say they currently have numerous images and videos that showcase all the freaky stuff. I know I've said a lot here, Man, this situation is crazy, but let's dive back in. DJ Academics is known for his wild reactions while streaming, and now this is going viral. With that being said, many are now curious to see where this indictment goes. At this time, Diddy remains in jail. However, Diddy's team did put together a bail package and make an offer, but it was denied. So guess what? We're on to the next story. Killer Cam and the rest of the Is What It Is panel are feeling some type of way about Shannon's comments. Let's check it out. Ever since the viral Shannon Sharp sex tape accident, some people online have been incredibly skeptical. One of those is rapper and sports talk show host Cameron. The de facto leader of the Is What It Is program has raised many questions, essentially asking how Shannon did this by mistake and why would he do such a thing? He feels that it was completely staged and that the ex-NFL tight end was looking to go viral again. The club Shay Shay founder has vehemently denied that that was the case on multiple occasions. But Cameron didn't stop there with Shannon Sharp. Not too long ago, he recreated the wild incident by having sex in a car, which got more unbelievable by the second. However, the Dipset MC is done teasing the ESPN employee for now. Him and the rest of his panel are feeling some type of way about the recent comments that Sharp made. The latter was addressing all of the people, including Cam indirectly, that were claiming that his sex tape was done on purpose. Shannon doesn't understand why others are coming to this conclusion, especially when he knows he could lose tons of money from sponsors and advertisers for his podcast. Shannon Sharp says he could understand the skepticism if his platform was trying to gain a bigger audience, but otherwise, he's not trying to hear that. 
However, he would listen to in the space are names like Joe Rogan, Alex Cooper, and the Khalees brothers, Jason and Travis. Hey man, Cameron ain't joking, man. He really got some strong feelings, but he ain't joking around with Shannon Sharp no more. This has gotten real contentious, but let's check out what Cameron actually has to say. Today he comes on his show and he's like, basically, everybody talking about me. I don't really care if it ain't Joe Rogan or it ain't the Kelsey brothers. Everybody else is underneath me. So I wouldn't pay attention when nobody say only piece of that person I would listen to is Joe Rogan or the Kelsey brothers. Once again, the white man is the only person that you will listen to. Uh, uh, again, <laughs> my, uh, my nigga, Shay Shay. Sometimes I think about what you saying. Put your glasses. <laughs> Put your on. glasses on. <laughs> if it ain't if it ain't the Kelsey brothers or Joe Rogan, I ain't listening to them niggas. He ain't saying it, ma or your or your name or nothing like that. The but ice he is colder when it's white, baby. The ice <laughs> is colder when it's white. <laughs> but he he basically. <laughs> He tried to say everybody else that was talking <laughs> shit about him is beneath him. Pause. He's basically saying everybody black is beneath him. Yeah, yeah. I saw, we, I, you we said heard you. We yeah, heard. We you. heard you loud and clear. We heard you loud and clear. But what I don't get still is like, why is just making a comment on the situation considered hating? Because it's like you did that. We're making comments. That's what we're supposed to do. Same way you make comments. Because literally the other day, like I was asking because I was thinking about it. I was like, why is it called Club Shay Shay? I was like, why is he called Shay Shay? Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, stat, you're hating. Duh, duh, duh. And I'm like, no, like as a grown man, why are you called Shay Shay? <laughs> I don't understand that. And that's not hating. That's a genuine question. And that's the ladies. <laughs> yeah. like, I just don't get it. <laughs> Cause and I'm not being funny. I'm just asking the question. It is it is S H A Shay Shay. S, but it's Shannon. It's it's sure. Yeah, but Shannon like but why would just be club Shannon like Shay Shay? Which what Stat is saying is you can't say Shay Shay without twisting your <laughs> doing one of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I just got questions and I just wanted answers. And apparently that's considered hating. I just wanted to know why the man was called Shay Shay. That was it. So I don't well, know. Look, as far as the merch is concerned, you should take advantage yeah, of the situation. Why advantage. not? I mean, shit. You lined it for this, my personal opinion. Yeah, we we just be joking up here. I don't, I don't ever, be joking. I don't I don't be joking. Be joking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't be joking. I be joking. Don't I, take me too serious. I think well, you he already got mad at you. <laughs> yeah, and you had put a little put a little sermon together on yeah, nigga to one day. Him, but, to yeah, you straighten him out, pause. But at the end of the day, what I will say on a serious note is look, I'm not backing down, pause. I think it was staged and you're taking advantage of what it is. You say you accidentally went live, and I'm not gonna dwell on it. We went on the show already, but it's no way to just look, this your phone. You put it down, you hit it, you don't go live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't. Even you gotta if, count look, you in. Look, even if you open your phone from the from the joint and then your phone is open, you gotta hit Instagram. You gotta go to post. You gotta go to live. Then you gotta hit the live again. It's how you just. It's four to five steps. It, yeah. yeah, I just did the steps. It's four steps that you got. So there's do. no way that was accidental. It's four steps you got to do to go live, and that's after your fold is open. And that's after you hit the the joint. And he is said, that true, stuff? Yeah, I don't. I'm telling you right now. Look, he walks you through it. Look, like. this is right here, and the audience probably know you do. You go to Instagram, boom. Well, it's already on there because I just put it on there. Let's close the app out just so murder can see. You one, one, two, yeah, three, three, four. It's four things to do. You can't just put your phone mm. down and be like, "Yo," because what he says is, "I've never been on live uh, before, so I just put my phone down and shit was on live." Come on, my nigga. Hey man, what do you think about Cam's feelings, man? Do y'all think that um him and Shannon should just have a phone call, man, or sit down and talk about this situation? Drop your thoughts in the comment section and let's dive back into this. He mentioned these names because Shannon Sharp feels their shows are above his and he would listen to their criticism because of that. 
That comment right there is what got Cam and Mace to unleash. The former took Shannon's statement in a racial manner, saying that he's gonna listen to the white man. Mace made sure to take it a step further, saying that Shannon was trying to convey that everybody black is beneath him. Shannon may not have meant it like that. It will be very, very interesting to see if he addresses these remarks. But man, what are your thoughts about Cameron calling out Shannon Sharp and May saying what they're saying about his particular comments and the way he's addressing this situation? But do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section and we're on to the next one. Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty accused of dodging 500k settlement payment. Let's dive in. The couple continues to generate controversy. As we all know, Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty never seem to make headlines for the right reason. Minaj continues to be one of the most successful rappers in the world, male or female. Whenever Minaj's husband gets involved though, the results are complicated at best. The trend continued on September 17, 2024. Minaj and Petty were put on blast by a security guard who claimed they assaulted him. The guard also won a settlement but is now claiming that Nicki Minaj and Petty have yet to pay up and he wants his money. This incident dates back to 2022. Thomas Wiedenmuller, the security guard in question, filed a complaint against Nicki Minaj. He claimed that he got into an argument with Minaj due to the way she was treating a female staff member. Wiedenmuller then alleges that the rapper threw one of her shoes at him. The security guard says things got even worse from there. Kenneth Petty allegedly attacked him for arguing with his wife. The security guard initially sought 700k in damages. He agreed, however, to 500k as a default judgment when the celebrity couple failed to respond to the lawsuit. So they got hit with a technicality, a default judgment. Man, you gotta show up and respond to those cases, but if you got money like that, hey, 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 do you. Weedon Mueller may have gotten a court ruling in his favor, but Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty have not cooperated at all. The Jasmine brand reports that the couple are allegedly dodging the $500,000 settlement they have been ordered to pay. Weedenmuller has waited for Minaj and Petty to make good, but has decided to file a memo highlighting their alleged dodging. The security guard has now filed both a memo of costs and a writ of execution against the couple in September of 2024. These filings have increased the amount that Minaj and Petty will ultimately have to pay. But prior to the filings, they owed $503,318. Now, they owe an increased total of $526,110.74. But ironically, Nicki Minaj recently made headlines for allegedly being owed money. The rapper took to the comment section of a DJ Academics TikTok to put Jay-Z on blast for his title dealings. Nicki Minaj was one of the superstars who signed on to be a partial owner of Tidal in 2015. She claimed that she was never paid a cent though. I didn't even get one red penny, Nicki Minaj announced. Hey man, this is crazy. Kodak Black is baffled by Donald Trump's claims about Haitian immigrants. Kodak is really upset and he did not like what he heard one bit. Donald Trump really tested the limits of his supporters' patience during the presidential debate. The former president claimed that the Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio are eating cats and dogs. This is a statement that didn't come with any evidence. It has subsequently been disproven and has already been identified as a low point in Trump's campaign. Kodak Black, as we all know, has been a vocal Trump supporter for years. But even he was confused by what he heard, especially given the rapper's Haitian heritage. Kodak Black addressed Trump's comments during a concert. This is crazy, man, he noted. That is true, man. I ain't gonna lie, homie. I'm a MF and Trump supporter. But the more the rapper spoke on the matter, though, the more he seemed conflicted. Kodak Black even vowed to pay a visit to Ohio to see whether Trump's claims were true. Man, I gotta see this ish. Some ain't smelling right, he claimed. I ain't see no Haitian eat no cat, homie. When y'all show me a Haitian eating a cat, bruh, bruh, then y'all could say that ish. Hey, so what do you think about this alleged situation about the eating of animals, man? Wow, yeah, it's gotta be a little disheartening being that Trump is his man and he is a big supporter, man. But let's dive back in. Kodak Black has been singing the praises of Donald Trump for several years. 
In 2023, the rapper explained why he found Trump appealing during an episode of Drink Champs. He a Gemini like me, Kodak explained. His birthday two days after my ish. Like he vibing out here too. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks. Kodak Black also claimed that Donald Trump was the best thing for the United States in a 2022 tweet. We need Trump in office forever, man, he asserted. Just like how them Chinese and them Russian and them Korean mom had a president. Trump the best thing for America. Instead of claiming that Donald Trump was benefiting the country, Kodak expressed doubt over what he said and how it reflected on his own people. His doubt did not mean that he was switching over to the Democratic Party, however. I feel like we all effed up anyway, he told the crowd. I ain't with that Kamala Harris ish either. What the F going on in America? Kodak may not have the answers, but he's asking the right questions. And I think his fondness of Donald Trump comes from him being pardoned by Donald Trump. But those words right there, hey man, he cares about his heritage and his people come first. But we're on to the next story. Last but not least, we got your boy 50 Cent. 50 clowns Diddy for alleged egregious use of baby oil. Man, 50 Cent takes no prisoners as we all know. 50 is someone who has taken shots at Diddy every single opportunity. It is one of his favorite pastimes. Rap geek. And it's something that he's been able to do quite a bit lately, thanks to the various allegations surrounding the music mogul. Just earlier yesterday, Diddy was officially indicted on charges of kidnapping racketeering, and even sex trafficking. The indictment alleges that Diddy was operating a massive criminal organization, though sought to traffic women for sex and to also engage in an alleged drug operation. Throughout the indictment, there are all sorts of passages about the alleged evidence that was obtained during the infamous raids back in March on his mansions in Miami and LA, and also New York. One piece of evidence has the entire world talking right now. Of course, we're talking about the alleged 1,000 bottles of baby oil lubricant. The state also claims this lubricant was stocked at various hotels where Diddy and his associates would allegedly engage in drink offs. Yeah! Now, 50 Cent, though, is taking aim at Diddy in the only way he knows how. The super duper Olympic troll is striking again. Here I am, keeping good company with Drew Barrymore TV, and I don't have a thousand bottles of lube at the house. Fifth row, one has to consider how Drew Barrymore must feel about 50 using her to get a dig at Diddy. Jab, jab, jab. Having said that, though, fans were waiting for Fifth to drop this kind of commentary. As we all know, it was inevitable. Subsequently, fans will now just have to wait and see how this Diddy case shapes up. But as it stands, he's in jail without the bail. But let us know what you think about 50 Cent trolling Diddy per usual in the comment section. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And thanks for stopping out. And we'll see you on the next video. 